Our Mufassireen have discussed this. What is an Imam? Is it the book of Allah? Is it the book of my deeds? What is it? And Allah Matabatabai Rahmatullahi Alayhi proves it from the Quran that here it is that physical living witness of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala on earth at all times. So what we find is Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is describing our obligation that we have to recognize the Imam of our time. We have to. Because at the end of the day, as much as our obligation is with the Prophet, who is our ultimate role model, there is always one who reflects the Prophet in our times. Now you might say, what about this Imam? How effective is this Imam considering the fact that he's in a state of occultation for more than 1200 years? How is that possible? What is the function of an Imam who is hidden? So now let's look at the rationality of the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in keeping a living representative on earth as a witness, even if there's no human being on earth. For he is a reason by which this earth is working and I'll explain it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always places the goal before he creates. The goal is always pre-existing the existence. Because if there is no goal, the moment of existence without a goal nullifies the existence. For Allah will never put me in a pathway that has no direction until then Allah puts a direction. That's absurd. The direction, the goal, the intended goal is first and then we exist. Otherwise there's no sense in my existence because every second of my existence has to be driven fahada. fahada. The hidayah has to exist already. Where is this hidayah? So when we look at representatives of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always on earth, even if we do not recognize them, it is a command of Allah with Yawma Nadu Kulla Unasin bi imamihim. Kulla unas, all of mankind, implying that every human being has a representative on earth. Every human being. Now we may argue, but what about the Holy Prophet? Isn't he our Imam? Yes, he is. He is our Imam, 100 percent But then isn't that sufficient? We said no. It's not sufficient. The Messenger of Allah who preached in public for 23 years, 40 years he was silent. 23 years out of which the majority of his life he was under attack. He was being attacked by the Meccans, he was being attacked by various groups, internal and external. That the Messenger did not have much time to explain the details of the religion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not leave us bereft of guidance. And hence, He keeps reflectors one after the other. Meaning the Messenger continues to live among us through His family as reflections, perfect reflections by which not to bring new laws, but simply to reflect the Messenger. And that's the rule of Imamat. That when you become a representative of Allah, appointed by Allah as an Imam, your obligation is not to bring new laws. You simply reflect what the Prophet said. When I, I, when I have a question, I go to a representative who can tell me, this is what the Prophet said. Because Allah chose this person and saying, I am a perfect reflector for you, not a deflector. Because if any individual is not appointed by Allah, those individuals become deflectors, not reflectors. And our obligation is to maintain connection with Allah and His Prophet. And it's impossible historically, unless there are a series of people who can ensure that this knowledge has been imparted perfectly so that you and I have no excuse on Judgment Day to say to Allah that my religion was incomplete. How did you expect me to reach perfection when you did not leave me a religion that was complete? So when Allah says, Al-Yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati wa raditu lakum al islam deena today I, I complete for you my favor upon you. Al-Yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum. It's my favor. I perfected and completed. Why completion and perfection? Implying that the reflectors are in place and now my reflection will continue for 200 years plus that when Imam Mahdi Ta'ala Faraja goes into hiding as a young man, if you calculate it, you will see that knowledge was in a, what we call completely to the, to the need of the society was imparted to people and explained over a span of 250 years. Now that makes sense. That if my prophet could live for that long a period of time, and explain to me many a details sufficient enough for me to hold on to the rope of Allah, 
then it's mission accomplished. Hence, the Imam goes into hiding at that time. This is the principle of the Ja'afari school of thought. Others may reject it, may say, no, this is unacceptable. It's perfectly fine. It's open to debate and argument. It is healthy when we debate and argue. I end with this from the point of view that the principle of Imamat, the principle of Messiah, meaning the coming, is accepted in all religions. Even our brothers of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah believe in the coming of the Mahdi. It's not a secret. It is unanimously agreed upon by all schools of thought. The difference is our brothers say the Imam is not born yet. He will come at the proper time. For us, he was always born from 1200 years ago around us and present in hiding with the wisdom of Allah in preservation as a witness. Now you and I may say, can I see this Imam? There's a quick story I'd like to share. Rajbali Ali Khayyad gives it very beautifully. You don't have to accept it, but the principle stands. I'm a believer in this. That a man wanted to see Imam Mahdi alayhi salam. He went to Masjid al-Sahla. There's a riwayat that when you go there, you read certain ziyarat for 40 nights, the Imam will talk to you. You may not recognize who he is. And this man does it for 40 nights. He doesn't see the Imam in his dream. He says, okay, so you want to see the Imam? Go to this city and wait for instructions. He goes, he travels a long distance. This is in Iran, Islamic Republic. He goes, he waits. And then in his dream, he's told, go to this shopkeeper and wait. He goes to the shopkeeper. He sees a young, handsome man sitting there. And he sees this shopkeeper who's a locksmith trading in a lock. An old woman is standing there trying to sell her lock and the man is examining the value of the lock. And she says, how much will you give me for this? She says, six tuman. She says, all day I've been trying to sell this. No one wants to give me more than three tuman. You want to give me six tuman? She says, he says to her lady, I can give you three tuman, but I'll be cheating you. I'm not a cheater. I give the price based on what it's worth. So she's very happy. She takes the sixth man, walks away, and that handsome man looks at this man and says, you don't have to go to Masjid al-Sahla and read dua to see me. You need to be like this man. I visit him because these are the representatives of God who uphold justice and equity in society. When you and I are honest, trustworthy, dependable, truthful, when we don't lie and cheat, Allah sends people. I'll give you a quick story before I end, I apologize. When we started our Islamic school in New York, I was very concerned about economics. How will I afford it? And I was, many people were whispering into my ears, don't go, it's not gonna work. You can't trust the people, you know, dangerous. You'll have all kinds of enemies around you. I said, but the need is essential. What will I do, oh God? I was very confused. I opened the Quran, Allah says, ask me, Remember me, I'll remember you, Allah says in the Quran. So I opened the Quran and the verse that came out, Do tawakkal, God is your wakil. He is your attorney, do it. So we did it. Now, when I got that verse, something of worries about finances just went out the window. I had no care at all. How am I going to afford it? $500 a week, $2,000 a month. I made a niya. I'll mortgage my house. I'll pay it. I don't care. The, the importance of this project is pivotal. Look what Allah does. Honestly, I'm not claiming to be anything special. Many of you have done it too. We were standing at the Islamic school in New York City. We were short $2,000 to pay that month. And a stranger walks in. And get me, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying this is the Imam. I'm not saying it is. But Allah has His representatives and they take care. I don't care who it is. It could be a black man, it could be a white man, tall or short. I don't care. Because the ones who do Allah's work are not limited to one group of people. A stranger walks in and says, I'd like to give a check to your school. I said, which school? There are two schools that run here. Which one? The weekend or the full time? He said, no, your school the one you run. I said, oh, the treasurer is right there. Go to him, he'll take care of things. He said, okay. He walks up and writes him a $2,000 check. A stranger, never met him. I thought maybe he's a parent. No, he was not a parent. Who among, in, in, I, believe me, it just shatters your mind. Who would walk in as a stranger from the street of New York City and walk in and give you a $2,000 check? 
Hmm? When he left, the brother says, oh, by the way, our deficit is taken care of. We have no deficit. I just smiled. And I remember that verse. Allah will take care of you. Leave it. 20 years plus, we've never been in the red. Never. Not a single day. We've never done a single day of fundraising dinners. Why? Not because it's not necessary. Because Allah says, Tawakkal Allah. I take care of that for you. See? Allah has representatives on earth. They do the job. And the leader is Imam Sahib al-Zaman, Ajallah ta'ala fajr.